So today I'm with Mookie. Mookie, thank you for joining me. Um, you are a subscriber to the Lost in Phoenix channel. And you'll comment that you'll you'll say, you know, um, I'm in recovery for X amount of days, you know, and then me and or other people, the other uh, subscribers, they'll be like, hey, congratulations, Mookie, right? And every so often, every month, two months, you keep us updated, right? Um, I'm, right. I'm, I'm sober, you know, 300 days. I remember one time I saw like 200 and some days, but now you're officially in recovery for how many days? 303 days today. <laughs> Awesome. And you started uh, your recovery this uh, January, right? Of this year? January 28th. Yes, sir. Wow. So you're almost coming up on one year of sobriety. And what are you uh, in recovery for? Um, I'm in recovery from fentanyl. Um, I was addicted to fentanyl for about eight months. Wow. Yeah. It so, was pretty bad. It, it was pretty bad. <laughs> and we're doing a zoom session because it can't be in person because you live out of state. So, right. uh, is it hitting hard? So fentanyl, so you guys call it, uh, fentanyl in your state or like here in Phoenix, it's known as blues. Um, do they, do you have any other name for it where you're at? Um, here they call them blues. They call them fentanyl. They call them perk thirties. They call them perkies or erkies or yerkies, kind of all kinds of different names, but, yeah, it's, it's for the most part, everybody around here calls them perk 30s, so to okay. say. And uh, those eight months, how was it for you? Like, what did you experience? Uh, uh, was it just uh, some people? It's like, oh, my time in, in using blues was like a blur, right? I was asleep half the time. I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, how 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 were those eight months for you? For me, it was definitely not a blur. Coming in not knowing really, I mean, I knew about addiction because both of my parents were addicts, but I didn't really know it was like this. So coming in not really knowing, you know, what I was expecting, um, it was kind of like, uh, it was, it's so hard to explain because like I, it was the whole eight months was I was there at the beginning. Obviously, I enjoyed it. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd do what I did and. I'd be feeling nice, but there at the end, I would say about four months before I quit, it was, it was miserable. I would wake up every day crying. I remember I would just scream to my husband. Like I just, I, all I could scream was God, please. Like going through that withdrawal was fierce. Like it was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through in my life. Honestly, honestly. So what, what would you say caused you to try them uh, to begin with? Um, Originally, it was because I was just taking tabs and perks, but a lot of it was to just numb kind of feelings that I was feeling before, like childhood trauma, stuff like that. Like I was just trying not to feel and fentanyl did the job, but it was it wasn't worth not feeling just to feel the way I did in the end, honestly. The. Um... You mentioned that uh, it was eight months. What prompted you to get better? Um, in all honesty, I had a, I was tired of withdrawing. I woke up every morning and I was withdrawing. And it wasn't even, I didn't even know it was withdrawal. I had a friend tell me it was withdrawal. And she just kept saying, when was the last time you had some? And I was like, oh, so and such, such, such. That's when I realized it was withdrawal. So I was just tired of going through the withdrawal. And then I remember I went to rehab for 19 hours. And while I was there, the lady, one of the staff members, she asked me, she said, uh, what's your Facebook? I gave it to her. The next morning I woke up to pictures of my son printed out on my nightstand. And when I left rehab after those 19 hours, I accidentally forgot those pictures and I never forgave myself. So I was figuring, okay, how can I make this up to my son? And the best way I did it, was getting myself ex clean exactly six days later. Wow. Uh, again, congratulations on that because, you know, for some people, it's really, a lot of people, it's really, really hard. Um, you also mentioned that your parents battled addiction. Uh, looking back, do you think that had something something to do with your uh, struggle with addiction uh, and trying these to begin with because um, uh, some people mention it 
like a generational curse, right? If my mom and dad did it, then I'm probably going to do it is what I've heard a lot of people right. say. What are your thoughts on that? Um, Honestly, and I'm not even going to sugarcoat it, I used to, in a sense, I wouldn't say laugh at addicts, but I kind of joked about it. And um, when even with my parents being addicts, you know, I didn't think that I would be one, especially considering I was adopted at the age of eight, but my adopted mother was a, social worker she was a substance abuse counselor ironically never told me anything really about addiction so I just I kind of I don't know I knew that it was a possibility of me being an addict because of both of my parents and I know that it's it's kind of deep in those roots you know with both of my parents being an addict I knew that it was more than likely going to happen for me I tried to fight it as long as I could but I did end up and, and when I first started you know, it wasn't like oh I just want to be addicted it was me doing some, and then 30 seconds later, I'd be throwing up so bad, I'd flush it, get another one. Throwing up so bad, I'd flush it, get another one. And then that's when my addicted actually, my addiction actually got really bad, like really bad. The uh, cost here in Phoenix for these pills, uh, there are some people that pay 50 cents for a pill. Uh, there's people who pay $5 for the pill. Uh, in your area, how much uh, are like would one pill cost? Um, it's funny you said that. When I very first started my addiction, which was around May of 2021, I was paying $35 per pill. When I quit, I was down to paying $11 a pill. So in eight months, the price went from 30 some dollars down to about $11. Correct. And what do you think caused that price decrease to happen? Well, a lot of the reason I think it was because people who I was going through for one, they were addicts as well. So they wanted to charge that extra dollar so they can get them a pill. And then a lot of it was Kentucky's a small town. I mean, we don't we don't even have a mall where I live. So there's nothing to do here but drugs. So it was kind of like, you know, we're addicts. We're going to pay that price. And they knew that. They knew we were going to pay that price. So I think when it all came down to it, they were realizing, okay, we're not going to be able to charge $35 anymore for this. We're going to have to, you know, go down a little. And so I think that's essentially why the price dropped because nobody was willing to buy them anymore. Because people could go 30, 45 minutes away and get them for way cheaper than what we were paying here. Mm, okay. Interesting. Uh, just the price dynamics, you know, very interesting across the, the country. Um, so now that you're sober, it's about to be a year in January that you've been sober. Again, that's amazing. What What's the future hold for you and your family going forward? Um. Honestly, I'm, I'm even at a year mark, I'm still like trying to get my brain back normal. I mean, I'm still can barely even get up to, to clean. So as of right now, looking forward, I just kind of want to get myself back on track and then kind of see where everything goes. But as far as like, honestly, if it wasn't for my husband's support, I probably wouldn't even have made it as far as I was. I mean, I knew deep down that I was tired of going through that, but his 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 support meant a lot in me getting sober. I mean, regardless, I was going to do it, but it, it helped a lot. So it was like looking forward. I just hope that I never have to go back down that road again. Honestly, <laughs> that's my biggest fear is having to withdraw again for real. And support plays a major role in the success or lack of success uh, with sobriety and uh, I think it's critical, very important that you have somebody in your corner that's going to support you and uh, your, your your husband. So, you know, that's that that's awesome that you have that. Um, what can people do that they they don't have support? They don't have a husband. They don't have family. They don't have siblings, a mom, dad. What what is there hope for them, you know, to be able to get out of that hole on their own? Me per personally, I would say that trying to do this alone just be your own support because honestly with and and I feel like I, I don't know personally but I have had a friend who actually I went looking on YouTube when I quit and I was just googling all kinds of ways YouTube and all kinds of ways that I can help myself through that withdrawal and I ran into a friend who had just recently quit 
And it took her a few days to get back to me, but she had said that her husband had passed from an overdose of fentanyl. And she still to this day is struggling with relapse and getting on, relapse and getting on. But she, she told me from her experience that every time she does it, the withdrawal is far worse than it was the last time she did it. Mm-hmm. So for me, I kind of look at, at that as a perspective too. Like, I don't, I don't want to go through that worse than what I did the last time, because I mean, not knowing that withdrawal could happen really traumatized me. I mean, so bad. So that for the first three, for the first 90 days, the first three months, I did not feel, I felt like I was looking at myself from a different view of someone else. Like it was just really crazy. Wow. Um, it's interesting how people that are going through recovery and for you, it's very, very, very recent. Um, you're able to watch these stories, right? These, these interviews, right? And right. what people have told me is like, I see myself in that story and that story and that story. And that, you know, a little bit of me is with every one of these stories. And it reminds me of what I could lose and what I, what world I can go back to if I trip up, if I relapse, if I get triggered, what's, what would be your um, reason for like watching these videos, like uh, staying in touch with a, a, a channel like this? Honestly, it is so crazy you asked that because just yesterday I told my husband, I said, honestly, this is my favorite channel when it comes to interviewing addicts because not only is it just interviewing, you know, like just to interview, it's like you genuinely care. And so with my perspective on it, it's like I look at this channel because when I see other people going through it, I remember where I was just a few months ago when I quit coming up on a year, just a year ago where I was, it was a very dark place. So when I look back and, and even just on Thanksgiving, I screamed, I cried, I begged, I pleaded, I screamed for fentanyl, but I know I couldn't do it. And because, and when I have those type of weak moments, I go to YouTube and I look at those type of things. I look at people who are withdrawn, people who are, you know, going through everything I don't want to go through again, ever. So that's kind of, it, it helps me in a sense. It, it definitely helps me stay clean. I would 100% say it helps me stay clean. Uh, Mookie, I'm like very proud of the success you're having with your sobriety. Uh, I've interviewed people and they're no longer with us, right? Uh, Blake, uh, uh, um, uh, Gabby, uh, uh, Cruz, uh, Diana, uh, just yesterday here in Phoenix, uh, a person that I interviewed, Mona, 23 years old, I interviewed her 10 months ago. Just yesterday, um, she lost her life. Somebody took her life, uh, just yesterday in a motel room. Um, I had seen her two weeks ago, I had seen her two weeks ago. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, I just had a baby three months ago. And and yeah, I'm still out here. I'm trying to get better. I'm, I'm thinking about going to treatment. And uh, she didn't make it to treatment. She didn't make it to any sober point. And, and that's just tragic because she is so young. She leaves back to yeah. her and, and And thankfully, uh, you were able to muster up the courage, right, with the help of your family, your husband. Uh, and even during your dark moments, your weak moments, that you call them right? Uh, you're asking for these pills, but uh, you'll look at a channel like Lost in Phoenix and you'll watch these folks and be like, that that could be me. That could have been me. I could have lost my life. So I need to keep going. I need yeah. to get to a year of sobriety. I need to go, go, just keep going, keep going, keep going, right? Um, uh, that's, that's a shining light. That's a great example to the hundreds and thousands of people that are out there all across this nation that are just stuck on this, right? Whether it's uh, blues or G or, or H or whatever it is yeah. out there that they're, that people are using to yeah. numb the pain, trauma, right? That's emotional trauma, physical trauma, just bad memories, right? Uh, yeah. That life causes all of us, right? Because we all struggle with things, but the difference is how do we deal with those things, right? Right, so, yeah. I'm hoping I just lost a friend. Um, I'm not gonna say the date, but I just lost a friend this month. 
um, to fentanyl. She was on it for three, four years, and she had come up on a lot of money, and and, and it essentially ended her life because she had the means to support that. So it was kind of, and it, it was so sad because me personally, I know this might sound stupid, but I didn't know that someone who was addicted to something for three, four, five years can have an overdose. I mean, obviously you could be given too much, but I just kind of thought it would be extremely hard for someone who was like on that drug. So like, that's another reason I look at this channel because seeing, I wish that my friend would have, ran across this channel because it's it's so crazy too because she called me a couple of years ago like it was right when I started my addiction and she just kept crying and she's like please get off of him please get off of him and I never really knew why she was crying come to find out she's crying over the withdrawal telling me you know please don't do this it's not what you want the withdrawal is fierce but then it was like I ended up surpassing her in the addiction like I ended up getting clean and she still was in the in the addiction and it just is crazy that it ended her life. And when I saw her in that casket, I keep telling myself, even the slightest little piece of fentanyl will kill me. It'll take me out of this world. And I keep telling myself that to stay clean. My uh, condolences for the loss of your friend, Mookie. And um, we're all losing friends, you know, like almost every day. And it's it's really sad and tragic because these folks aren't really being given a... Um, uh, an opportunity to live a, a fruitful life. They're getting stuck in this addiction, the cycle of yeah. darkness and, and, and nobody's helping them. So uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for sharing your story. Um, it's a, uh, it's, this is a good story, right? On this channel, unfortunately, there's a lot of sad stories, uh, but this is a great example, how you're able to overcome the struggle, right? The, 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 the battle that's, that's happening yeah. inside of you. Keep going, keep us updated. Okay. Because you're that shining light to prove to everybody that a uh, recovery is possible. Right. And uh, I'm proud of you. I just met you just right now today, but uh, <laughs> Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm proud of you. Okay. Because you're giving yourself an opportunity um, you know um, uh, kudos to your husband because uh, that must be hard, you know, to, for what he's gone through, but he's strong enough to help you to get you out of that hole. And, and sometimes that's what it takes, like teamwork, you know, and by you sharing this story, somebody out there is going to be given hope. And so yes, and I hope that people can see this story and think, okay, if she did it, I can do it. Because I honestly, I thought, and I, I, I swear, I was, I woke up one morning, I was calling around to everybody I could think of, asking, is there any way I can get through this without actually going through this withdrawal? Is there any way? And every place just kept telling me the same thing. Well, there was one place, but they wanted like $20,000. And obviously, I don't I even have $20, let alone 20000 So I was like, no, I can't do that. But I, coming, like looking and telling people who are watching this video, please, you can do it. It's better to do it than to let it claim your life. Definitely. I mean, definitely. It's hard. And I did it cold turkey. I sat in this bed for three weeks straight, screaming at the top of my lungs, but I did it. And it was so worth it. Every day that I wake up sober and I can look at my child, not nodding out, not being at the mailbox and smoking a cigarette, nodding out, people seeing me like that. I lost 90 pounds. I was 200 pounds when I started. I was 110 when I quit. Like, it's just not... It's not the life. And I really hope that, that this video can change a lot of people's perspective on the drugs that they're putting into their body. Uh, this uh, interview, you sharing your story is going to impact and save at least one life. That I know for yeah. sure. Okay. So you should be proud of that. Your family should be proud uh, that your experience uh, is not only going to give you uh, a, a second chance at life, but you're also giving somebody a chance to not try it to begin with, right? And right. those people that are in that are, they're in in that struggle, you're gonna be like, hey, if she did it, I can do it too. That's gonna happen as well. So it's a win-win situation when people share because that's how we educate. That's how prevention through awareness starts, right? By being aware of your story and uh, overcoming obstacles. So uh, again, Mookie, thank you very much. I'm grateful for for you sharing your story. Please keep us updated. Thank you for being a part of the Lost in Phoenix family. And we'll talk very soon, okay?
Absolutely. And thank you for doing the interview. I, I really love it because I love watching this channel. Thank you. I appreciate you, Mookie. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. <laughs> thank you. Bye.